This dam is enormous. The reservoir behind it will be around the size of London. The dam will be twice the height of the Golden Gate Bridge. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has an epic name for an epic engineering feat. Hi, I am Eli the Engineer. Come with me as we explore this remarkable project. It has taken decades to develop and is part of the Ethiopia's so-called economic miracle, owing to its potential to raise millions of its citizens out of poverty. However, it could also be the deadly spark that brings war to the region. Once completed, this will be Africa's largest dam. It is so vast that it has its categorization. It's a mega dam. This dam will generate over 5,000 megawatts of power, doubling Ethiopia's current power output. Its reservoir will hold 74 billion cubic meters of water. The dam will cost a staggering $5 billion to build. The dam was financed by the country issuing government bonds and loans from China. As of April 2023, the dam was approximately 90% finished. The Italian engineering firm Woodbuild ran the entire project. The stats don't get any less intimidating here. The dam comprises of 10 million cubic meters of roller compacted concrete. She will include two power plants, three spillways, and a saddle dam. The main dam will be 145 meters high and 1.7 kilometers long. While the saddle dam that supports the main structure will be an incredible 4.8 kilometers long by 45 meters high. There will be two outside power stations on either bank of the river, with the capacity to generate around 2,000 to 3,700 megawatts of power. The site of the Blue Nile for building the dam was surveyed by American engineers since the 1960s and was identified as a prime location for a dam. However, the Ethiopian Civil War in 1974 put those plans on hold for decades. Fun fact, the Nile is the longest river in the world. It is approximately 4,135 miles, and it flows through 11 countries in northeastern Africa, including Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. The diversion of the Blue Nile River in 2013 was the first step in the process to build a structure this incredible and set the tone for the rest of the project. As dramatic as that may sound, water diversion of rivers is a rather common technique for building dams. This is how it works. Most dams are built above rivers, but pouring concrete requires a dry working environment. For the duration of a dam's construction, diversion channels or tunnels are built around the dam's location to create that dry work environment. Explosives are typically employed to clear a route through hard rock, while soft soils and stones are excavated. When there is a dry space for workers, the foundations are constructed. The foundation must be able to endure the dam's weight, and the high water pressure is pressing on them. As previously stated, the Renaissance Dam will be 145 meters deep, nearly the height of a skyscraper, with 74 billion cubic meters of water behind it, creating significant pressure. Those foundations must not leak under any circumstances. As a result, the soil and rocks beneath the dam must be examined for strength and occasionally replaced with stronger materials when needed. When the dam is finished and in place, the diversion channels around it are usually blocked and water rises in the reservoir behind the dam construction. That is exactly what happened at the Hoover Dam, which is located on the Arizona-Nevada border. Water is released through dam openings as needed and is frequently used to generate hydroelectric power. The massive magnitude of the Renaissance Dam most likely necessitated the establishment of on-site concrete batching plants near the work sites. They expect to boost productivity by having better control over material delivery which is critical after you've started a large concrete pour. Fun fact, there would have been no ancient Egyptian civilization without the Nile River. Ancient Egyptians were able to cultivate food and construct permanent settlements thanks to the fertile soils deposited by the river's periodic flooding. The construction of the Grand Renaissance Dam did not come without challenges. It's worried that its share of the water will be reduced when Ethiopia starts to fill the massive dam. There is no Egypt without water. We either have water or there is no future for us. The project has undergone several design changes as technology has changed over the years. Financing was a major obstacle as raising the staggering amount necessary to build the project was a huge undertaking. The government had to find suitable homes for the people displaced by the project, and this also delayed construction from moving forward. An interesting fact was some of the people being displaced did not even know what a dam was so explaining to them why they had to leave their homes was an ongoing struggle. Also, due to the threat of malaria from the dam's waters, there had to be a 5-kilometer buffer zone where people could not live, and this was another source of delay. 
However, due to the delicate politics surrounding the project regarding Ethiopia's neighbors, many of the Renaissance Dam's construction details have been kept top secret. The dam is being built on the Blue Nile, only 30 kilometers from the Sudanese border, and this has sparked heated discussion over who controls the Nile and the water that flows in it. Egypt's is further downriver, and Egypt is wholly constructed around the Nile. This one source provides an incredible 85% of the country's water supply, and 95% of the country's population lives within a few kilometers of this famous river. Over 100 million Egyptians are wholly dependent on the Nile for water. Canals from the Nile irrigate crops and support cities, agriculture, and fishing. The Nile has brought life to this barren region for thousands of years, and if something were to happen to jeopardize that water source, the results might be catastrophic. And Egypt is well aware of this. Egypt sees this situation as an existential threat. Tensions in the region are high, and this dam appears to be at its center. Egypt has threatened to bomb the dam to defend its interests in the Nile. In 2013, there was an embarrassing international incident. Egyptian president at the time, Mohamed Morsi, was in a meeting with his advisors, who suggested the dam be destroyed by either the Egyptian military or by covertly supporting Ethiopian rebels. Comically, the entire meeting was being televised, so there had to be profuse apologies by the relevant parties. Over the years, there have been threats and counterthreats between Egypt and Ethiopia, so Ethiopia has invested in anti-aircraft technology to defend against any Egyptian air assault. This situation could turn into all-out war. So why would Ethiopia risk a potential conflict for a new dam? The administration hopes these mega-projects will help pull the country out of poverty. Today, half of Ethiopians do not have access to power. The dam would change that. Ethiopia is on the fast track to economic success, being the fastest growing economy in Africa, boosted by massive infrastructure investments and a relatively young population. Ethiopia has reduced the number of people living in extreme poverty from more than 50% of the population to 31%. This Ethiopian economic miracle is being hailed as a model for other African countries. Major infrastructure developments are extremely crucial in this process. Fun fact, many species and ecosystems depend on the Nile River for survival. Numerous animals and fish call this region home, including Nile crocodiles, African elephants, hippos, and more. The river and the associated wetlands are crucial to the survival of many bird species, both as migratory corridors and as nesting sites. Ethiopia has made the argument that the immediate effects on downstream countries will be minor. The advantages will be numerous and may be shared by all the countries in the region. The dam could be used to alleviate flooding in the region and surplus electricity, could be sold to neighbors like Djibouti. The issue over who owns the waters persists. Today, talks between the countries have completely broken down, with no deal in sight, even though the dam is currently 90% complete and projected to be filled within three years. Whatever the outcome, this is a piece of marvelous infrastructure that will undoubtedly transform more than just the region's waterways and has the potential to pull millions out of poverty. Thanks for watching our presentation and don't forget to like and subscribe. The YouTube algorithm likes that. Stay safe.